السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Maybe we didn't have breakfast yet, so I won't bother you guys. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على أفضل الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد أحباب مصطفى عليه الصلاة والسلام What a wonderful morning to be in the house of Allah سبحانه وتعالى where we have some good weather Inshallah, the sun is shining bright. There's no rain this morning. The weather is not too hot, definitely not cold. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for waking us up after we were asleep, for giving us life after the small death, which is the incident of sleep. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this day a source of goodness and a source of happiness for all of us, and may He protect us from all evil. Allahumma ameen. Ahbab Mustafa alayhi salatu was salam. In our very short halaqah this morning, inshallah, we continue talking about akhlaqul Muslim, the behavior of the Muslim. And today we talk about something very important, which is that from the behavioral qualities of the Muslim, from the akhlaq of the Muslim, is that the Muslim is easygoing. The Muslim is easygoing and makes things easy and convenient for people around him or her. And we're going to go through a few ayat and some ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ that speak more about this idea. Uh, there is an ayah in the Qur'an, in Surah Ali Imran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks to Muhammad ﷺ, and this is one of the most important ayat that we're going to reflect on today because it really teaches us a lesson. Allah says to Muhammad فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضَّ الْغَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْفَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ Allah says to Muhammad وسلم, had it not been or it is because of the mercy of Allah that you were gentle and easy going with your people. Had you been harsh and difficult with them, they would have ran away from you. Something to think about. Allah is telling Muhammad Sallallahu that he, Ali Sallallahu the only reason people followed his message and accepted his da'wah is because of his personality, because of how he dealt with the people. You know, not everyone around us is going to be a philosopher or a academic to disconnect themselves and evaluate the truth of what we say and the logic of what we preach and then make a decision. Most people decide on what makes them feel good, let's be honest. If you're a nice guy, I don't mind hanging out with you. If you ask me nicely, I'll help you. Most people make decisions based on how they feel. It's human nature. And so the Rasul is something for us to think about that Yes, he had the truth, the word of Allah was with him. But a huge factor in people accepting Islam and in the whole Arabian Peninsula following his religion was his character and his behavior, how he dealt with people. The kindness, the gentleness, the easygoing nature that he had, والسلام, attracted the masses of people over time. One of the things that we can remind ourselves about is, you know, this takes time to build a reputation and to build a type of understanding of what kind of person you are or I am. It takes years. It doesn't happen overnight. And this is what sometimes we are missing, whether it's as an imam of a community, parents in a household. We think that we will say something that makes so much sense, everybody will run to follow. It doesn't work like that. Maybe sometimes you get lucky, those who Allah has blessed, maybe, maybe. They have, you know, that fortune that they say something, it makes sense, so people listen. But 98% of the people will either listen to you or ignore you based on how you deal with them and how they feel when talking to you. And the Prophet ﷺ mastered this art. He made everyone feel important. He made everyone feel loved. He made everyone feel like he was giving them his attention. And so naturally, people wanted to listen to what he had to say. And so Allah says to Muhammad that even if you, O Messenger of Allah, were harsh 
harsh and difficult with the people, you would have found nobody to follow me. People would have ran away from me. And who had more truth and who had more rights for people to follow than Rasulullah Wasallam. So the point that we're trying to inshallah benefit from this morning and adopt in our behavior as Muslims is to be easy going, to make things easy, to be gentle with people around us. Something for us to think about again in the Quran, Allah commands Musa السلام, to speak to Fir'aun, right? To go give da'wah to Fir'aun. What does he tell Musa السلام? Go talk to him in a gentle way. Maybe it will be a beneficial reminder for him and he will start to be conscious of Allah. Just imagine for one second how evil of a human being is Fir'aun and imagine the greatness of the Messenger of Allah, Musa alayhi salam. Allah is telling Musa alayhi salam that when you go to talk to this evil man, make sure you speak gently. Because this can at least give him a chance, make it easier for him to at least consider what you have to say. And this is something that our scholars and our teachers have mentioned to us. You know, if you have something that you want to share with your brother or your sister, the scholars of Islam, they have an expression, they say, advice is heavy. So help your brother or sister out by packaging it with some kindness, some gentleness, some politeness. By default, no human being likes to receive advice. There are a few exceptions. Those are the people Allah has blessed. But majority of people don't like receiving advice from other people. Not because we're horrible people, but because when you give me advice, there is a recognition that you recognize that I have mistakes, that I make mistakes. And most of us don't like to publicly acknowledge or admit there's something wrong with us, right? So the scholars of Islam, they say that the advice is already heavy. If you want your brother or sister to even consider the advice, make sure it has lots of gentleness and easy, you know, presentation and politeness attached to it. This is the only way you can give your brother or sister any chance of swallowing that advice. Because the advice is already heavy. If it comes packaged with some rude words, some mean comments, then you can forget about anybody accepting what you have to say. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Musa alayhi salam that you're going to go speak to the Fir'aun, speak to him in a gentle way. There is a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he said alayhi salatu salam that Allah has made haram the fire of Jahannam for some type of people. And he explained والسلام, that the fire of Jahannam has been made haram for the one who is easygoing and gentle when speaking and dealing with the people. Something for us to think about. In another hadith, the Prophet والسلام, explained to us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Sayyidina Adam والسلام, from a handful of clay. Some parts of the handful of clay were soft while the other parts of it were hard. And so because of that, some of the children of Adam developed rough personalities, and some of them developed gentle and easygoing personalities. But here's something that we can take home with us, inshallah, is just like with all of the other points that we spoke about when we talked about the akhlaq of the Muslim, it's not acceptable for somebody to say that I'm a difficult person by nature. Or I'm a rough person by nature. You have to work on improving. Our whole struggle in life is to reach a higher level of character, to reach a higher level of behavior. This is why Rasulullah was sent in the first place. Then the same way, by default, many of us are not patient people. By default, many of us are not, uh, you know, whatever quality it is that we're, well, we can use as an example. But you have to exercise and you have to practice. You have to become more patient. And you have to become more helpful. And you have to become more truthful. And you have to become etc. etc. Then the same goes for this quality of being gentle and easygoing. It's something that we have to work on. Just because somebody by nature is rougher or harsher with people, it doesn't give them a license to always behave in a harsh and difficult way. You have to work on refining your character, 
on developing that ability to be more tolerant, to be more, more easygoing, and it has lots of perks. Think here that the Prophet ﷺ is saying that it's haram for a person to enter Jahannam. Haram how? Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided for himself that he is not sending anybody to Jahannam if they are, have the ability to deal with people in a gentle and easygoing way. And is it not, not worth the incentive? Isn't it worth it for me and you to adopt and to struggle? You know, if somebody gets on your nerves or somebody asks you for something 10 times and you already told him no, okay, 11th time with a smile, tell him sorry, can't help you with that. You don't have to blow up and yell at the guy and belittle him and make him feel bad. So this is something that we can, inshallah, take home with us. That yes, some of the children of Adam are more gentle than others. But all of us have a responsibility to practice and to work hard to become people that have this quality of gentleness and easygoing when we deal with other people. To compare opposites, which is always very healthy, right? The, there's a saying that says, with opposite things become clear. With opposites things become clear. So if you understand Mathalan, as an example, not this morning, inshallah, but maybe last night. If you're eating your dinner and you have something very spicy, and then you go grab the dessert, something so sweet. After eating the spicy food, you can appreciate what the sweet dessert tastes like. If you are somebody who, you know, comes from a very warm climate, you guys, when you came from Indonesia, when you arrive in Canada in February or in December and you find minus 20, minus 25, all of a sudden you understand the benefit of warm weather, how much better it is to be in a warm country. Then when you see opposites, it's easy to appreciate and understand what we're talking about. There's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he said, the believer is easygoing and flexible. Right? The believer is easygoing and flexible. And the hypocrite is stubborn and doesn't budge. Opposites. The believer is easygoing and flexible. If you want it this way, we can do it. If you want to go the other way, we can go. No problem. Stubborn, obviously, because we don't want people to misunderstand, especially our jama'ah here, mashallah, you guys are amazing. But those of you who are watching at home who are also amazing, but I can't see your faces, so I don't know who is confused and who is not. Obviously here we don't mean be flexible with the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah said something is haram, is haram. There's no room to flex. Allah said you have to pray five times a day, no room to flex. But we're talking about when we deal with each other. Somebody asks you for a cup of coffee. Oh no, not with milk. Can you please get me another cup without milk? I don't drink milk with my coffee. Ah, you, you, up and down. Flexible, easygoing, tolerant, ability to, with a smile, get people what they want, right? When it comes to things that don't involve the hudud of Allah, don't involve the limits and the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when it's our personal interactions, our personal requests from one another, then the believer should be easygoing. A simple, most basic example is in the family. The husband wants something, the wife wants something, the kids want to do something. If everybody is flexible and easygoing, this will be a happy family. And if everybody, may Allah protect us, is like the Prophet described, the hypocrite who is stubborn and doesn't budge. So who said you can tell us what to do? Who said you can have an opinion? I said what we're going to do. It will be my way or there will be no way. Or you can take the highway, etc., etc. This kind of attitude, can anybody enjoy that family? Imagine the husband and wife all day on opposite ends of the spectrum, insisting, have to go right, have to go left. Tell them what to do, go separately. Eventually this family will separate, obviously. But there's no other option, right? So something for us to keep in mind from the qualities of the hypocrite is that they are stubborn and they don't budge. And this is obvious because that's why they insist in their hypocrisy. It's part of their nature, it's part of their quality, right? But the believer, on the other hand, very flexible, right? And I think I touched on this briefly last week in our sunny halafa outdoors in the park. The religion of Islam, last week I spoke about the importance and the need to find alternatives in life. I can't remember if I gave you guys the example or not. But the religion of Islam, the sharia of Allah itself, provides us with the role model for how flexible we need to be. 
we cannot flex the Sharia. But the Sharia itself is flexible for us, isn't it? If you cannot stand and pray, sit down and pray. If you don't have water to make wudu, okay, make the yamma. Anything, if you're not able to do or it will bring you difficulty in the Sharia, you are excused. If somebody is traveling or sick, they don't have to fast. Somebody doesn't have money, doesn't have to give zakat. Somebody is unhealthy, doesn't have to make hajj. These are with the obligatory pillars of Islam. There's room within the Sharia, there's flexibility. Then what about me and you when we deal with what we need from our family, when we deal with our expectations of the children, when we deal with our brothers and sisters in the masjid? How much more is it mandatory for us to be flexible and to be easygoing and to adopt that nature and that quality of you know, taking it easy? The believer is not rough and tough. The believer is not stubborn. The believer is not hard-headed. It's very, very important. So some people understand the opposite, subhanAllah. Some people literally understand the opposite. They think to be the good Muslim, you have to be stubborn. To be the best Muslim, you need to be hard-headed. To be a good worshiper of Allah means to ignore the needs and the requests of everyone. There's some crazy people, they think this is what Allah expects from me and you. It's obviously not. The Prophet ﷺ, look at his life, study his character, والسلام, study how he dealt with people. How he interacted with his Sahaba, with women, with children, with the elderly, with strangers, with non-Muslims. You'll find the Prophet ﷺ was easygoing, willing to talk to anybody. One of the things that proves the easygoing nature of the Prophet ﷺ, which is inshallah what can be a role model for us, is the fact that if you read the seerah, you find how approachable the Prophet ﷺ was. If somebody is not known for being an easygoing, gentle person, most people will refrain from talking to them, right? Imagine if I came here every week and I conducted the halaqa with a nasty frown on my face, looked at all of you guys, a useless bunch of people. What time is it now? We didn't have breakfast yet. What is going on? No coffee even. Really, we need coffee though. Right. Imagine if, if this was my demeanor. Every week we came, no smile, just like this. What's going on today? Where, where is this one? Where is that one? What happened? Ah, ah, you complain about everything. Do you think anybody will be interested to talk to me? The people will count the seconds. When is the Imam leaving? Is he gone yet? Right? But subhanAllah, some of us in other areas of our life, we conduct ourselves like this. Inshallah, not us, but some people. Right? The way they conduct themselves, the way they behave is nobody enjoys their company. Nobody enjoys their presence. The believer, inshallah, me and you and all of us who are watching together at home, for those of you who are watching together at home, our goal should be, inshallah, it's not a popularity concept. Wallahi, it's not a popularity concept. But the idea is for the sake of Allah to follow the role model, our beloved messenger, alayhi salatu salam, we should be people who other people enjoy our company. They feel like oh, this is a nice person that we like to spend our evening with. This is somebody we enjoy having at our house. This is somebody if we had nothing better to do, we can give him a call and we'll enjoy chatting with him or her. Why not? Right? Then the believer, inshallah, is easy going and easy to deal with. There is a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari which further can demonstrate this concept to us. The Prophet ﷺ was very specific. This is a Beautiful hadith, one of the hadith that I had to memorize last year, I believe, it was part of our study of Sahih al-Bukhari with the ulama al-Azhar. Alhamdulillah, we had the opportunity to study some of the hadith of the Sahih of Imam al-Bukhari, memorize them and learn some of the benefits that we can extract from these hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said, رَحِمَ اللَّهُ مْرِئٍ سَمْحًا إِذَا بَاعَ وَإِذَا اشْتَرَى the Prophet said, May Allah have mercy on a person who is easy going when he's buying something. And he's easy going when he sells something. And he's easy going when it comes to taking the return of a loan that he gave to somebody. Right? The Prophet is saying, May Allah have mercy on a person who when he buys he's easy going. And if he's selling, he's easy going. And if he is collecting a loan that somebody owes him, he's also easy going with them. Obviously, the collecting loan we understand. 
meaning you owe me five thousand dollars i come and ask you is it you know do you have the money you say not yet i only have half then i say no problem give me half and i'll come back to you next month maybe you'll have the other half inshallah with a smile why not right this is an example of being easy going when collecting our loan what about buying and selling this is again from the quality and there are many examples from the sahaba to prove this but i want to wrap up quickly inshallah so i'm not gonna go through all of that but it's very obvious and self-explanatory when you buy something be easy going somebody tells you a price for something it's not haram in islam to negotiate but don't try to skin people all the way to the bone right understand that the person on the other hand if the product is good then it's something that you need Allow him to make a profit and go home happy as well. Why do you have to be the only one who goes back with the biggest smile on your face while your brother is saying, and in khalas, at least we got rid of the product, we don't have to put it back in the storage, but we didn't really make any money off of it. But some people, the Muslim, mashallah, who prays and he fasts, his goal in life is to remove and erase as much profit as possible from the business owner in front of him. It shouldn't be part of the behavior of the Muslim. And the same goes when you sell. As I said, there's nothing wrong. Please don't misunderstand me. It's not haram to negotiate. But you need to negotiate in a reasonable way. Somebody is selling something, if you can save, you know, a few cents or whatever, alhamdulillah, no problem. But allow him to also feel happy. Just to prove the concept with one example, I promise that I won't go too far off attention, but one example just to show the concept. Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan, in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, he purchased some land from another man in the Medina. However, he gave him the money, and the man was supposed to come back with some key or some key to open the lock for the fence of that land. And the man didn't show up. And a few days passed, few days passed. And Uthman ibn Affan, he went to see the owner. He said, what happened? Like, I gave you some of the money and you were supposed to come back with the key. We're supposed to complete the deal. I didn't see you. So the man, he explained, he said that, you know, after talking to my friends and whatever about it, I feel you ripped me off. Like, I feel the price wasn't right. And he made a statement. He said, they were laughing at me. They said, how did you accept that kind of price? So Uthman ibn Affan and the books of hadith narrate that the agreement was made in the presence of other people. So they were witnesses. So Uthman ibn Affan, if he wanted, he could have taken the money and said, no, you're, what are you talking about? We're going to the Messenger of Allah. You agreed. You gave me your word. There's two people here to witness. You have no other choice. Bring the key. I'll give you the rest of the money. But Uthman ibn Affan said, if that's what the people are saying, is that how you feel? Do you feel you didn't get a fair price for this land? The man said, after talking to my friends, I really don't think so. So Uthman ibn Affan said, then return me my money and, you know, go sell it to somebody else. Why not? Return my, I lose nothing. Return the money to me and go somewhere where you feel that you got a good deal and you're happy with it. There's no need for me to feel like I'm the one who profited and benefited while my brother on the other hand is crying at night and he can't sleep because he feels he lost you know, valuable real estate. So this is the idea. When we buy and when we sell, be easy going with one another, especially with your brother and your sister. When you sell, same idea. When you sell, be reasonable. Be easy going, right? The brother is selling a car. He wants, مثلاً, $25,000 for it. You ask him, you say, brother, what year is the car? Well, the car is 10, 15 years old. How are you asking for 25000 for it? Because I paid 25000 for it 15 years ago. Yeah, Habibi, 15 years has passed. Don't you think the car value could have depreciated a little bit? Does it look reasonable, sound reasonable to you? But very difficult, very tough, insisting that what I spent is what I must get back. And again, it's not haram. Everything we're talking about here is not haram. No one's going to Jahannam because they sold the product for exactly what they bought it for after using it. But the idea is the quality of the believer, the character of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ is making dua saying, may Allah have mercy on the person who is easy going when they buy things, easy going when they sell things. Meaning reasonable, fair with the people. Don't take advantage of the people 
and treat the bottom line, all of these discussions that we have had so far for how many months now, the bottom line of the Islamic behavior and of the akhlaq of the Muslim is what? Treat people the way that you would like to be treated. The way you would like people to treat you, this is how you treat other people. If you want people to be gentle and easy going with you, then be gentle and easy going with the other people. We close with the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. He said, alayhi salatu wasalam, Allah is rafiq, yuhibbul rafiq. Allah is easy going and he loves people who are easy going. It's literally that simple. There is a story that the Prophet ﷺ narrated of a man who came before our ummah. And he didn't do any good deeds. He wasn't a religious man per se, but he was a wealthy man. And he used to, you know, lend his neighbors and people who were in financial difficulty, he used to lend them some money. And so the story goes, the Prophet is telling us the story that when the man was returned back to, when his soul was returned back to Allah, Allah asked him about what he did. And he said, nothing, nothing really, oh Allah. The only thing is, I was really, you know, willing to help my neighbors and my friends and I took it easy on them. If I lent them money and if they couldn't pay, I told my workers to give them extra time to only take from them what they can afford to pay back. And I was generally easy going with the people. The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, it's more befitting that I treat you in a gentle way than it was for you to treat them in a gentle way. What does this mean? Allah is reminding him that it was very nice of you, very kind of you, that you were gentle with your friends, but it's more befitting that I, Rabbul Izza, I, your Lord, treat you in a gentle and easygoing way. If you can be gentle and easygoing with human beings on earth, inshallah in the akhirah when we go back to Allah, He will be gentle and easygoing with us. And this is what I'll close with. Let's think about it. If we are difficult and stubborn when dealing with the people, just imagine if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to be stubborn and to be difficult when judging me and you on the day of judgment. Which one of us will survive? Then be easy going, be gentle with the people. Inshallah, Allah will treat us with gentleness and kindness on Yawm Al-Qiyamah when we need it the most. Hatha wallahu a'lam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barik ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in wa alayna ma'ahum bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته